Hi guys! Today I'll be teaching you how to create a tote bag or multiple tote bags. I was going to include this in the spring crochet part 2 video but I really wanted to go into depth with the different variations of tote bags. I don't know any of the proper names nor did I come up with any just yet but there are four different variations that we'll be covering in this video. The first one is the granny square tote bag, then there's the magic circle technique tote bag, the grid pattern tote bag, and a regular double crochet tote bag. Once you learn the essentials of putting a tote bag together, you can literally create any type of design that you come up with. With that said, let's go ahead and get into it. I tend to forget to state what materials I use in some videos, so I'm going to make sure I actually do it this time. For the tote bags in this video, you'll need a 5mm hook, yarn of your choice, I personally used worsted weight for yarn, some scissors, stitch markers, and measuring tape. Here's a little card stating all the information for each of the bags that I do in the video, so you don't have to scroll through and look for it or anything. For the granny square bag, you're going to go ahead and figure out which colors you want to use. I used a total of five colors, light green, dark green, mint green, blue, and beige. The first thing you're going to do is create a slip knot and chain three. After you chain three, put your hook into the first stitch from the chain. and slip stitch by pulling the yarn through both loops, creating a circle in a way. Then you're going to go ahead and chain two. After you chain two, find where the center of the circle is and insert a double crochet into the middle. You're going to add a total of 15 double crochets into the middle. After, you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the row to close the row. Then, you're going to chain one and cut the yarn, pulling it to close the row. You can go ahead and gently pull the yarn sticking out from the middle of the circle so the gap in the middle can close. I prefer to weave in my ends as I go so that I don't have to worry about weaving in like a trillion ends throughout the project, so that's what I'm doing now. I tend to go through at least four loops three times to make sure that the weaving is extra secure. Now, take your hook and insert it into any loop you want. I personally like to do it close to where I ended the row just so it feels like I'm starting a new one right at the same place that I started it at. Put the new color of your choice on your hook and pull it through, making it secure in that stitch. Then, you're going to chain two. For this row, you're going to add a little puffy effect to the circle which is super cute. While crocheting, make sure you're weaving in the ends as you crochet by keeping the ends close to the side of the project so that you can crochet around it which basically traps the yarn in place so that when you cut it, it doesn't come loose or anything. For this row, what you're first going to do is yarn over, insert the hook into the chain space, yarn over, and pull through. This creates three loops on your hook. Instead of finishing the double crochet, you're going to yarn over again and pull through, making five loops on your hook. Do this one more time to get seven loops on your hook. And then once you have seven loops, you're going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops. 
After that, chain one and start going into the next stitch. In the video, I really struggle getting the hook through all those loops, but if you pull up a bit after each time you create the loops on the hook, it makes it 10 times easier for you to pull through all seven. And of course, when I did this off camera with all the other squares, I was able to pull it through flawlessly, but you probably won't believe that. Go ahead and do this around the entire row, always ending with seven loops on your hook. After you finish that row, slip stitch to close the row and chain one. Cut the yarn, pull the yarn through the chain to secure and tighten. For the next row with your new color, you're going to go ahead and insert your chain into an open space where you added your chain 1 in the previous row and attach the yarn. Chain 2 and you're ready to begin. What you're going to do is yarn over, insert your hook into the same chain space, pull through 2, yarn over and insert your hook into the space. Yarn over and pull through two. And continue doing this until there's a total of four loops on your hook and four stitches in that one stitch. The chain two you did before counts as a stitch, so it's technically five loops that's supposed to be there. After that, yarn over and pull through all the loops before chaining two and moving on to the next stitch. In the next stitch, you're going to do the same thing, yarning over and pulling through the space for a total of five loops on the hook and four stitches in one space. Do this for the entire row and at the end, slip stitch to close the row, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. For the next and final row, you're going to attach your new color. And chain three. In the same space as the chain, you're going to do a treble stitch. To do this, wrap the yarn around the hook twice, insert your hook into the space, yarn over, and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again, and yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So you're basically yarning over and pulling through two loops three times. You're gonna add two treble stitches into that space since the chain counts as a third. In the next stitch, you're going to do three double crochets into that one space. Make sure you're weaving your yarn in as you go.
In the next space after the double crochets, you're going to add three half double crochets. In the next space, go back to the three double crochets. And then in the next, you're going to add three treble crochets. So you're basically going through all the crochets besides single and letting it go up and down like a roller coaster. This row is personally my favorite part of the granny squares. After you finish the three treble stitches, chain two and add three more treble crochets into the same space. There should be a total of six treble stitches in one space. This creates the corner that creates the square look of the granny squares. After that, you're going to go ahead into the next space and do a double crochet and continue the previous pattern. There should be no chains throughout the row besides the chain you do on the treble crochet parts. Repeat the pattern of treble, double, half double, double, treble until you get to the end of the row. Once you get to the end, you're going to add three more treble crochets into the first space of the row. and then slip stitch the row closed, chain one, cut the yarn, pull it through, and your square is complete. For this bag, I did a total of 13 squares. You can do more for a bigger bag, but this is a good amount for a smallish, medium size bag. To connect all the squares together, all you have to do is lay out the squares in this shape. Two squares at the top, three squares in the middle, two under that, one under that, two under that, one under that, and two at the bottom. This is both sides of the bag before it's connected. You want to make sure that the squares are facing with their corners facing upward to make the specific shape I'm doing in this video. If you want to make a square bag, then face them with their sides facing up instead. To attach them together, all I did was slip stitch each of the squares sides together until everything connected. It's pretty simple, but it's amusing to think that I was legit so scared of messing up this bag since this was actually my first time doing it. By the way, I didn't create this pattern or anything. I found the granny square pattern in a crochet book I have, and I've seen these types of bags all over Pinterest, so I thought it would flow nicely in this video. To slip stitch them together, all you have to do is connect the yarn to the end of one square and then go into the loop farthest from you in the square next to you and the loop closest to you on the square on the other side. I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but just take a closer look at the video. It honestly doesn't matter which loop you go into. If you want the slip stitch to be seen on the outside of the bag, slip stitch with the right sides of the squares facing up. If you don't want the slip stitch to be shown, slip stitch with the wrong sides of the squares facing up. Either way, looks incredibly cute.
For the corner section here, all you have to do is continue into the next stitch you see and continue to stitch normally. You don't do anything different from the little corner sections. Once the bag is attached, you're going to fold the bag in half with the right sides on the inside. The sides of the bag will be folded inward like this and then slip stitched together. All you have to do is attach your yarn to one of the ends of the side of the bag and slip stitch until you reach the top of the bag. The top has to stay open so you can actually put stuff inside so make sure you stop around here. You're going to do the exact same thing on the other side and then chain one and cut the yarn. Before adding the straps, I did two rows of half double crochet to have a place where the straps would go. This also makes the bag look more polished in my personal opinion. What I did was start at any corner of the bag and then went around two times with half double crochet on every stitch until I was satisfied. For the straps, I decided to put them on the middle stitch of each corner on the top of the bag. I attached the yarn and chained 80. 80 for the chain is like my personal favorite length for the straps in my opinion. You can add more or subtract less for a longer or shorter strap. After I chained 80, I slip stitched the chain into the other side of the same side of the bag. I then chained one, but you really don't have to chain one, and turned the bag around to work into the chain. I worked half double crochets into every stitch until the end. Make sure you go into every stitch, even the stitch where the bag strap starts. After that, you're going to take your hook and go into the stitch that's behind the strap. When you go into it, the strap will turn a bit because it's going in an unnatural way, but if you do this, the strap tends to look more neat, in my opinion. After that, I chain one, but you don't have to do that, and then worked through the strap with half double crochets again. Once I reached the end, I again half double crocheted into everything, especially the chain where the strap is attached, and then created a slip stitch into the opposite stitch, making the strap turn to the other side. You could make the straps as wide as you want, but I only did two rows for each strap. Once you're done, chain one and pull the yarn after cutting it to close the row, weave in your ends, and you're done. You can go ahead and pull the bag inside out and celebrate because you just made this awesome bag. This tote bag is the easiest in my personal opinion. I couldn't think of a name so I just named it the basic tote bag. For this tutorial, I'll be using a random yarn to make the base of the bag due to the velvet yarn I'm actually using being a bit too difficult to see the stitches on camera. So you'll see me using three different colors of yarn for this tutorial, but everything is exactly the same. To make this tote bag, create a slip knot and chain 45. The chain 45 will be for a medium sized bag. While you're figuring out how many you want to chain, remember that later on we're going to increase in multiple spots so the tote bag will be bigger than the base chain. I'll explain this later on. Here's a little card with the chain for each size. After you chain 45, you're going to go ahead and double crochet three times into the third stitch from the chain, making a little round corner. I advise you to use a stitch marker to remember where this increase was.
Then you're gonna double crochet normally down the entire chain. Once you reach the end of the row, you're going to double crochet 5 times into the last stitch, making it circle around back to the other side of the row. You're then going to double crochet into the opposite side normally, weaving in the yarn end as you go. Once you reach the end of the row, slip stitch into the first stitch you did to end the row and chain 2. For the next 3 stitches, you're going to add 2 double crochets, which is an increase, into each stitch. Doing this makes the yarn bend a bit to create the sides of the tote bag. After, double crochet normally down the row until you reach the last 3 stitches of that side. Increase into those stitches and then add 2 normal double crochets into the round part of the end of the row. and then do three stitches of increases. After this, double crochet normally until the end of the row. This is the end of the second row. After ending the previous row, all you have to do is double crochet until the bag is long enough for your liking. I use a stitch marker to mark at the end of the row.
This here is a smaller bag where I used a chain of 35. This is how it looks a little bit once you continue to double crochet a couple of rows. You can see how the sides are growing taller. Here is what the bag looks like when it reaches the length that I preferred. Once you reach the length of your desire, finish that row with a slip stitch, chain one, and cut the yarn, making sure to pull the yarn so that the row closes up. Weave that in and you're ready to start the straps of the bag. To do the straps, take the bag and put both sides together. You'll need four stitch markers to mark where each side of both straps are going to start and stop at. I eyeball where I personally like to add the stitch markers, and for this bag specifically, I only wanted one strap, so I added the stitch markers to the corners of the bag instead, marking where I wanted the strap to start and stop. To start the strap, all you have to do is insert your hook into one of the stitches that the stitch markers are in, and yarn over and pull a strand of yarn through. This attaches the yarn to the stitch, and personally, I chained 80 for the strap. Once you finish chaining 80, slip stitch into the second stitch marker and then turn the bag. I chained one in this clip, but you can skip that and go straight into half double crocheting into the strap. Once you reach the other end, repeat the previous step, which was slip stitching into the next stitch, turning the bag, and half double crocheting into the strap. Do this until the strap is as wide as you like. For this bag, I did a total of three rows. And at the end, slip stitch into the same stitch and then chain one. Cut the yarn, pull through, and your bag is finished. Make sure to weave in your ends though. So the one that I did at the end of the tutorial, I consider a size small because I used a 25 chain to complete it. And then for the main bag of this tutorial, this velvet black and pink bag, I used a chain of 35 to complete it. And I just wanted to show really quickly the differences of the straps. So this strap, I only did three rows for each strap. And for this strap, I used four rows. So if you're going to make a bag with two straps, I personally recommend just doing the three rows. And if you're doing a bag with one strap, then I recommend four to five rows just to make it extra thick. And I was gonna do two straps on this, but I ran out of yarn in this color. And I'm trying to use all the yarn that I have before buying some, so it's just gonna stay the way it is. But this was the main bag that I wanted to do for this video. And as you can see, there's two straps here. So this is what it would look like if you did the straps on the other side where you would put the stitch markers and everything. And then for a large bag, I have this bag here that I did with a chain of 50. So this bag is pretty big. It holds a lot of stuff on the inside. Um, in comparison to the small, you can see here, it's pretty big. And then when you compare it with the medium sized bag, the medium sized bag can possibly stretch out to the same, but I still consider this a medium. This is the inside of the bag here. I didn't line anything and neither did I do that yet for this one. But for this bag in particular, I did line it on the inside. And at first I was gonna show you all how I lined the bag, but 
I personally used a tutorial on YouTube on how to line the bags so I'm going to link that in the description or add it in one of the cards or something because it's a very very well made and detailed video and I don't want to take anything away from that if you want to line your bag and I personally recommend you do so because it makes the bag more sturdy um, then you can go ahead and click on that link and make the lining for the bag For the magic circle bag, you're going to first make a magic circle. To do this, wrap the yarn around your hand twice. With your hook, you're going to go under the first part of the yarn and then over the second part of the yarn, using your hook to twist the yarn to where it's now under the first strand. You're then going to go under the strand to your left and pull the hook under the strand and pull it through the loop that's already on the hook. Sometimes, if it's too hard to get the hook through the loop, I'll gently pull the magic circle off my hand and assist the hook in getting through the loop. Then you'll have a circle. What you'll do now is double crochet into the circle. You'll do this for a total of 12 times in the middle. To close the gaping hole in the middle, pull the small strand of yarn here gently but firmly and that will close the hole up. Once you finish 12 double crochets, slip stitch to the first stitch on the left and then chain 2. For the second row of the bag, you're going to do an increase into every stitch. These increases will help the bag get to the specific size you want. To increase, all you have to do is put 2 double crochets into the stitch. Just so you know, the bag I'm making is a large in this tutorial, so you can kind of eyeball how many increases you want to do just to get a specific size that you want. I'm really bad with calculations, so I apologize. At the end of the row, you're going to slip stitch to end the row and chain 2. For the next row, you're going to increase into every other stitch. So for the first here, you're going to do a normal double crochet and then in the next stitch, add 2 double crochets. Repeat this pattern all the way to the end. Slip stitch to end the row and then chain 2. For the third row, do an increase into every third stitch. You kind of get where this is going? So you're going to double crochet normally for the first two stitches, and for the third, add two double crochets. Repeat this all the way to the end and slip stitch to the end of the row. Here is a little card that shows how many increases you're going to do for each row for a large magic circle bag. I did a total of 11 rows, which was all the way until after I finished increasing in every 10th stitch. The row you end the increases on will be the row that starts the wall or sides of the tote bag. After you reached a good size for the base of the bag, you're going to double crochet into every stitch and create as many rows as you want. I personally added a stitch marker to the last increase row so I can count how many rows of normal double crochets I did. For my large bag, I crochet until I reached 22 rows in total. When I finished the last row, I slip stitched to end the row, chained one, and cut the yarn, pulling it to close the row. To do the straps, take the bag and put both sides together. You'll need four stitch markers to mark where each side of both straps are going to start and stop at. I eyeball it where I personally like to add the stitch markers, but for this bag specifically, I put the stitch markers on the sixth stitch of each side. To 
start the strap, all you have to do is insert your hook into one of the stitches that the stitch markers are in and yarn over and pull a strand of yarn through. This attaches the yarn to the stitch. For me, I personally chained 80 for the strap. Once you finish chaining 80, slip stitch into the second stitch marker and then turn the bag. I chained one and turned in this clip, but you don't have to chain at all while doing the strap. After I slip stitch into that stitch, I go ahead and half double crochet into the chain all the way until I reach the place where I started the strap. Make sure you go into every single stitch, even the stitch where the stitch marker is, with a half double crochet. After, turn the bag over once more and then go right into half double crochet until the end of the strap. You can make them as wide as you want, but for this personally, I stopped after two rows. After I turned the bag, I went into the opposite stitch from the direction in which the strap is naturally leading you to go. It makes the strap look a tad bit cleaner in my opinion. Slip stitch into the opposite stitch and then chain one, cutting the yarn and pulling it through to secure the row. After that, weave in all your ends and you're done. To create a grid bag, you first need to find a grid you want to make. You can either design one yourself using a website I linked down below, or you can find one online like on Pinterest or Google. The grid I'm using for this video is one I found on Pinterest. I thought it was super cute so I decided to use this one. To get started, I created a slip knot and chained 46. I chained more than the grid showed due to me wanting the bag to be bigger, so you don't necessarily have to chain 46. I recommend chaining how many boxes the grid has. After I finished the chain, I went ahead and went through each stitch on the chain with half double crochet. I later regretted this, so I recommend you use single crochet unless you like how half double crochet looks. Once I reached the end of the row, I chained one and turned the bag to create another row. I personally recommend creating an extra two rows so that when you connect the panels later on, it won't ruin the graphic in the middle. Once I finished the first two rows, it was time to get started with the actual design. With grid patterns, you're essentially going to work back and forth from right to left and then left to right. Each box you see is a stitch, so you want to make sure you do every stitch with your preferred color in order for the design to come out exactly as it's drawn. If you're right-handed, you're going to start the first row from right to left left and then when you turn your work you're going to work on the opposite side from left to right to ensure that the design comes out properly. If you work from right to left for every row the design will not come out properly. Switch this around if you're left-handed. I like to mark each side of the design to know which way I have to go. I also add a stitch marker to the opposite side to remember which side is which. Also if this is a bit confusing I want to explain that when I mean working from left to right to right to left I mean when you're looking at the grid pattern. When you're crocheting you're automatically going to go from right to left on each side but in the design you should work from right to left to left to right. Before I stated that I was making the bag a bit larger than the actual grid so here I was just adding stitch markers to point out where the pattern would actually start and all the extra space will be filled with the background color. After that, I went ahead and began to design. I have double crocheted all the way to the first stitch marker and then began to look at the grid pattern to see how many stitches of the color I was using I had to do.
Once I did those, I reached a point where I had to change the color. Adding a color is really easy. All you have to do is wrap a loop of the new color onto your hook and then insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull it through. In this part of the video, I'm showing you the wrong way to do it, and I didn't realize I was doing it incorrectly until later on. I'll show you the proper way in just a moment. I apologize about that. But once you add the color, drop the old color and begin crocheting with the new color, making sure to keep the other strands in hand so you can weave them in by crocheting around them. Once they're weaved in enough based on your personal preference, you can go ahead and cut the strands off that you have no need for and continue working on the pattern. I reached the second stitch marker that indicated the first row of the pattern was done, so I quickly finished the rest of the row, chained one, and turned my work. On this side, I decided that this was going to be the wrong side of the project, or the inside of the bag. So I added a pink stitch marker to show me that whenever I worked on this side of the project, I'll be working left to right on the grid. Also, whenever I finish a row, in order to not get mixed up, I just cross the row out. Um, so right now I'm halfway through, but I wanted to show really quick what I'm doing with these numbers. So essentially, I'm counting all of the, the squares and writing the numbers so it's easier for me to go instead of having to count every single row. Um, so for example, this black row right here, which is the green on my... Um, this, I counted it and it says it's 26 uh, um, stitches. So I just wrote 26 and then I counted up for 25, 24, all the way up to like one. And so I did the same exact thing for the white and this tan area, just so it makes it easier for me to go through and not have to go through every single uh, stitch. Or so I don't have to go through and count every single stitch every single time I go to a different row. So here I'm going to show you how to correctly add and change the color. Once you reach the area where you want the color to change, loop the new color around the hook and kind of twist downward so that when you insert the hook into the stitch, it loops around the hook. Then you're going to pull the strand of the new color that's connected to the ball of yarn through the stitch, ending up with three loops on your hook. Yarn over once more and pull through all three loops. And now your color is connected. Now, begin working with the new color as normal, making sure to weave in the other strands as you go. When it's time to switch back to the old color, all you have to do is drop the other color, grab the new color, and continue to crochet. That's it. Once everything is weaved in and you don't need the color anymore, you can go ahead and cut it off. To end the row, chain one and turn your work. I did one more row and then once I reached the end, I chained one, cut the yarn, and pulled to secure. I did a total of 40 rows. After that, you'll have one panel. Now, you just have to make one more. You can either do another panel exactly like the first one, choose a different grid pattern to use, or make a blank panel, which is what I'm doing. You're going to chain the exact amount as the first panel and then work up with half double crochets until you reach the amount of rows you did for the first panel. For me, that was 40 rows. Once you finish the row, go ahead and chain one and cut the yarn, making sure to pull it to secure the row. After the two panels are done, all you have to do is place the right sides together or the outside of the bags together, making sure the inside of the bag is facing you. Once they're aligned, insert your hook into the corner of both of the panels and begin to slip stitch. Slip stitching is just pulling the yarn through both loops. Once you reach a corner, all you have to do is just slip stitch into the next stitch and continue as normal. It'll round itself out on its own. Once you reach the top of the bag, finish the row on the last corner and then chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. The last step is to add the straps. Add the straps, I use stitch markers to mark where I want to start and end the straps on each side of the bag.
To begin the straps, all I did was insert my hook into where one of the stitch markers were, looped the yarn over the hook and pulled it through. I then chained 80. After I finished the chain, I slip stitched the chain to the opposite stitch marker on the same side of the bag. After that, I turned the bag and went straight into the chain without chaining and then went through with half double crochet. Once I reached the end, I half double crocheted into every stitch I saw in the chain, even the stitch where the stitch marker was placed after removing the stitch marker. I then slip stitched into the stitch to the left of the space that I just went into and turned my work to half double crochet back into the strap. Once I reached the end of that row, I half double crocheted into the stitch marker space and then slip stitched into the stitch to the left of it. I then chained one and cut the yarn. You're going to repeat that on the other side and you'll have officially finished your bag. After literally 80 years, I finally finished all of these bags. I have been so busy and it took me forever to finish this video, but it's finally here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I know this is kind of at the end of the video, but still. So I'm going to show off all of the bags that I made for this video. I am going to start with this bag here. This was the velvet bag that I made in the tutorial. I used a different yarn for this um, just to show you because it's kind of hard to see the stitches when you're working with velvet. In the end, this came out super cute. It matches these shoes that I have here and one day I'll wear them together once I actually go someplace. And this, I would say this is a medium sized bag because it's not too small, not too big and it has enough space and everything. And then the one that I did actually in the tutorial. But yeah, I consider this to be kind of like smaller than small personally. And then this one here, I didn't do this on camera, but this is a cross body type of bag. If I were to do this one a little bit differently, I think I would make the strap a little bit shorter, bringing the bag to like right here just because it's kind of hangy and then when I put stuff in it, it like kind of weighs it down a lot. Um, this is the only bag that I have actually done a lining on the inside. And like I said before, I wasn't gonna show a tutorial because I used someone else's video for the lining. And that link is in the description box below if you want to do the same, which I highly recommend because it makes your bag really sturdy. But I think these might be my second favorite. And my number one favorite is this one, I think was my favorite to work on throughout the entire project. I loved making granny squares for the first time. Um, they came out really cute and they were really fun and quick to make. And I feel like granny squares are more fun because you're doing different stitches throughout the entire project. Whereas normal like patches that I used for like the patchwork cardigan, for example, it's just the same stitch over and over so it can kind of get boring but I like how fun the granny squares were to make and this was actually really easy to do like once I was putting it together I was low-key kind of scared I was like I don't know how to put this together but once you align them correctly it's actually really easy and I kind of consider this to be reversible because if you open it on the other side or if you put it inside out it still looks exactly the same. The only difference is, is that the slip stitches that you use to connect them don't show. But I think either way is really cute, personally. My third favorite, or it was okay, is this magic circle bag that I did. This one honestly took forever to do. 
and mainly because I kind of made the base too big, uh, which I mentioned earlier. But it's it reminds me, it, it, I think this bag is best for like if you're going to the farmer's market. Even though it was really annoying to make, I actually really do love this bag. Um, I feel like I could have made the straps a bit longer, so it could be like one of those bags that sit like right here. I mean, it does sit right there, but like I kind of want it to sit farther down. But I still like it, and I would still definitely use it. I can all I can use all of these for my grocery bags, honestly. The last bag that I made, on also my least favorite out of all four, is this grid bag here. Um, the reason that it's my least favorite is because it just took forever to do and I kind of wish I did use single crochet instead of half double crochet because the way that it looks is kind of weird to me or not weird but it doesn't look good to me personally. Um, I thought the single crochet wouldn't look good but now I've realized that maybe it would look good. If you can tell I kind of missed a couple stitches and it made the uh, bag kind of hourglass and get smaller, unfortunately. But besides all of the mistakes that I made, grid bags are very simple and easy to do. All you have to do is just find the specific grid pattern that you want to use and then go ahead and crochet it together. And then for the back, you can either, you can either add another graphic, the same graphic, or leave it blank like I did. And then you're, you, uh, Slip stitch it together, pull it inside out, and you're good to go. That is all of the bags in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about the long wait once more. I will be more consistent, but honestly, I say this in every single video, so you'll see it when it happens. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye.